Time for questions. Thank you, Herman. Thank you. Herman, um, very quickly, I need to get this one off my shoulders. Is the DA right and am I wrong about Gaten McKenzie? Help me here. I'm happy to be wrong. I've been wrong many times. So, Well, I think uh, I don't stand on a fence. So, uh, me as him and Mashaba, uh, in terms of trust, and I'm and I'm not here for, for trust and friendship, but when uh, could, uh, the electorate of, of us to put in a coalition arrangement, I can tell you between Gaten and, and, and DA, I'm more trust the, uh, the pair, the, the Gaten than I trust the DA. DA has led me down so many times, so many times. Gaten has never once, never once, um, went against the, uh, the his word. So, that's it. So, Rob, you, uh, you, you, you're not going to drop PA and Gaten after that, I'm sure. There's a question right at the back. Uh, thank you, Alex. Uh, Mr. Mashaba, you spoke of being a Christian. Uh, how, if you do, do you plan on uh, integrating Christianity and its values into your system of governance? And uh, is there a set plan or an idea of how you're going to do that? How are you going to integrate Christianity into your system of government? No, uh, I think what I've said, uh, uh, God, is, uh, God is not Christian. God is a God, to, can be a Muslim, can be a Hindu, can be a Jewish uh, person. So I'm not talking about Christianity, About I'm talking about God, have, you know, having the spiritual uh, consciousness. Uh, that's really what I'm talking about. I'm a proud Christian, but uh, I coexist uh, with my Muslim, Jewish, Hindu friends, because all of us, we believe in God. So a higher power. In Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Mashaba, thanks for starting Action South Africa. Action SA. Action SA. You're also going to get into trouble. Sorry, my bad. Slip of the tongue. Um, I think there's a big chance you're not going to be the sixth biggest party next year. You're probably going to be in the top three. What processes are you putting in place to structure your party for that? Well, uh, I'm sure fellow South Africans, you are away uh, 12th to the 14th of uh, September, we having our own, our first inaugural policy conference. You are all invited. Uh, we are running round table um, uh, engagements right now with various experts because uh, we don't know it all. I mean, now, uh, uh, Ask me about uh, law. What do I know about law? Why do I know about uh, energy? We need guys like uh, Jan to assist us how to fix uh, um, uh, the energy crisis in our, in our, in our country. So um, we are going to really be detailing the event. It's a three-day event. It's going to be covered uh, by all the, uh, the media houses uh, so that we really have uh, clarity. So you'll see the resolutions we're going to be passing uh, on terms of our policies. And uh, they're not going to be popular policies. Uh, and one thing that um, every time I tell, uh, um, we invite um, uh, experts uh, to assist us, I said, but please, uh, we are asking you as an expert, but please don't come and tell me um, socialism and uh, communism are the future. It, they, we've got good policies, but we cannot implement them. And I said, what, what nonsense is this? I mean, if, how can a policy be good if it can't be implemented? So if you want to come and assist us, we, we are a, a, a free market economy. So that's where you can come and assist us. Like I said, if you don't believe uh, in the high, high, higher power, you must come and tell us uh, that uh, we must not bring God back into our, our into our society. Please don't come and waste our time. If you want open borders, I don't want to live in a country with a constitution and we we have un uncontrolled borders. Uh, I mean, South Africa is a sovereign country. Build at the back of migrants, and we need to continue to that. So we we need to make sure that uh, uh, the sovereignty and, and the borders of our country. Are protected and encourage people of the world. I can tell you, South Africa, uh, like Rob says, 
we are not only, once we turn this country around, we are not, in fact, we will get more experience, more money coming from the international community than our own people. Because uh, this country, South Africa, is a special country by, by, by far, by, by far. And the people of the world that are aware about this, unfortunately, we are let down by our political leadership. The question that I have is, is in, we are living in a country where you, youth unemployment is very high. Uh, national unemployment is, is, is very high. And uh, when you are, there's a party that shifts towards the left, they are able to gain popularity. And uh, I mean, things are not getting better. Every spark is, is, is causing a fire in our country. So in terms of strategy for next year, um, what is it that you're currently doing uh, to, uh, I'm aware that you, you're saying that uh, you're, you're currently winning people in the villages. So what is your message to the people to give them hope? Because quite frankly, a lot of people think that it's uh, a quick fix, right? And this is what the left side is saying. Um, you know, we just need to do X, Y, and Z. So what is the message? And secondly, I'm a young back professional and um, I know you want to bring a lot more uh, competent people uh, in your country, in, in, your, in your party, but we are scared, right? Um, cowardly as it may be, you know, you read about all the, 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 the political killings, you want to get involved, you, you, we believe in education. I'm in Hermanus from Bushburg Ridge because of education, um, you know. Um, so th those are my two-folded questions. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think, uh, honestly, uh, the, the, the question of uh, one having the courage to do what is best, it's, a, it's an individual choice that uh, people make. Um, uh, I cannot understand, and I raised this issue earlier on, that uh, I, I find it really very uh, strange that people were prepared uh, to face um, um, the apartheid bullets, but today they're too scared uh, to speak because uh, they're going to lose their job uh, 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 from ANC will, will make life difficult for them. I took that decision long before I thought that I'll get mad to, to think that I'll solve the country's problem. I've been really, as soon as I discovered ANC, I voted for them twice in 1994, 1999. And during Thabo era, that's when I started seeing uh, the criminality of the ANC. And I started uh, speaking as I took advantage of uh, to, to, as as a successful business person. I would be invited um, to events like this, and um, I'll speak about uh, the destructive nature of uh, this ANC tripartite alliance uh, that has destroyed our country. The communists. How on earth do you have a country um, that's? Uh, <laughs> Our growth rate, uh, the, the economy growth rate uh, is lower than the population growth. But you have a communist as a minister of trade and industry. I mean, it, you, we must be a mad society. To, we, we, I don't know. Something is wrong with us South Africans. Minister uh, pa Patel, before him was uh, Alec uh, Elwin, communist, running uh, uh, the, the, uh, such a very important uh, critical uh, portfolio, you know, so I think it, it's just really for, for, for black and whites. It's not just really blacks uh, who, are, who, who are scared. I mean, yesterday we, we had this march, thousands of, uh, of people. Um, actually, let's say we've got big numbers of uh, t white members. I was surprised the other day I was in, 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 in Devon. One of our guys, uh, Alan, in his neighborhood discovered we're going through the system, discovered got a lot of uh, uh, members who self-registered themselves, whites, invited them to his home uh, that I ad addressed them. You know, these are our members, not, uh, you know, but uh, when you, you go out there, there are issues. White people are, are too scared to come out because they think uh, they, they're going to be called racist or whatever. If you're not a racist, why are you worried about it? Black people, blacks, are worried that they're going to be called something else because I can tell you right now, um, um, if this is broadcast, I can tell you the EFF and ANC people are calling me house nigger. They're calling me. Um, uh, 
I'm I'm kept chatted by white monopoly capital. Uh, you know? So, but and and what I find really very strange about this, uh, about their text, going to Twitter now or whatever. Look at what they're saying. If this is broadcast live, uh, you know, not I'm, broadcast live, but it will be broadcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you you follow up uh, to see uh, that um, I'm going to be a kept chat the black, uh, you know. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, you're not going to distract me, uh, distract me from um, for really fighting for what is just uh, it's true. Whether you are right or wrong, at the end of the day, and I don't stand on a fence. Uh, you know, for me, and it's either you you. You like me or hate me, and I, uh, you know what? People must understand. I wasn't brought into this world to make friends, but I value friendship. Friendship for me, it's it's important, but not the type of friendship that people may get. Some sh very popular ship in in Johannesburg and Sex and World. If you want uh, that kind of friendship, go to Sex and World at that ship in. You'll never see me at that ship in making that kind of friendship. So I think. Uh, I'm not in this job to, to make friends. I'm in this job because I'm worried about the future of my children and my grandchildren. I, I don't want my children to really live uh, in chaos. Uh, um, like what, what happened uh, last night. I don't know if it's still happening today. I don't want my kids uh, to live in a country where 70 people are being murdered every single day. Countries at war don't lose the people like this. I don't want to my the, the girls or the neighbors or my the fellow women uh, to be raped left, right, and center. Our youth being destroyed uh, by international drug syndicates. And when we talk about it, they call you xenophobic. To hell with them. You can call me anything. Uh, you know, there's just no way that I'm going to be scared of democracy. I was never scared of uh, apartheid regime with a uh, brutal machinery. And I'm not going to be scared of uh, democracy. And uh, I'm not here for friendship. I'm here to really do what is best of my ability for my country. Herman, I, I think with very few exceptions, everyone in this room, the Biz News Tribe is in exactly the same place. We're on the same page. And when you talk about speaking up, when you talk about being involved, when you talk about being worth fighting for this country. It's what Robert Herzog did, what you're doing. You're putting your head above the parapet to make a contribution. And I think that's one of the things that we, that's why you're here. That's why we wanted you to come and celebrate with us today. So thank you. Thank you. My name is Olivia. And sorry, I have to read this because I have a few quotes. In an interview with Christine, Dr. Albert Porter, leadership diagnos diagnostician, stated that Herman Mashaba was a wonderful leader in a country where leaders has lost their way and because they were focused on their own gains. He went on to say, Herman Mashaba has done something different and I see it in Action SA, but circumstances and time have a way of changing one's mindset and trend of thinking. When you took over the mayorship of Joburg, he said your policy was how I can serve you, the people. My hope is that circumstances and time do not change your mindset. Thanks, Olivia. Well, well, uh, you know, fortunately now, uh, uh, I'm not in this uh, political game uh, to deprive myself uh, of uh, uh, the time to spend uh, with my family. I've been married uh, 41 years uh, to uh, to a young woman, uh, and I'm. I, I really feel so bad every time I've got to leave home. I mean, I live uh, away from home um, lately more than I used to when I was in business and making money. So I'm not in this game to make money. Uh, to, to my to wife uh, I, and my family have been really very supportive um, to, uh, underwriting this whole project for South Africa because uh, they know uh, my circumstances. I was born in abject poverty, as I've indicated, and uh, lived uh, um, most part of my youth uh, in a two-roomed uh, tin house. Uh, my father, for some reason, I believe he was a great man, but he, died, he decided to die when I was two. And uh, him and, and my mother, I don't know whether they forgot or not, because my father believed he was a great man. They kept on making babies with the fault of me, you know, building as a house. So the first time I ever had the house of my own, 
I was 26. I was studying the Black Lives Matter in 1986. Uh, Lucas Mangop in Lupitanswana started that it's a suburb in Harangua called Unit 8. Bought my first house, uh, paid cash for it. And a few months later, my mother was 64, bought a, a house uh, uh, in, in Temba, you know. So I'm not in this game uh, da, 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 to make money out of politics. Uh, politics actually for me, it's a, it's a very expensive uh, the sport uh, to play and the uh, the where, in fact, yesterday I saw myself when I got to, to a hotel uh, on national television when I was handing over the memorandum to the police uh, because I went to Sentin Police Station a few months ago to win a, a charge. Someone um, sent me an SMS that I must uh, leave politics or I'm, or I'm going to be killed, you know. And I got to the police station, uh, uh, Sentin, yeah. Hey. Low shading, there no generators. Uh, so I gave this in a, as an example. So South Africans are aware that there are people out there that wants to kill me, and uh, and the police and are not interested. Even up to today, when I laid the charge, I laid it in the center, and then a few a few days later, I'm told it's been referred to Cape Town. Um, to Cape Town then moved somewhere else in Cape Town. And then from there, it has died down. No one has ever come back uh, to me. In the meantime, we here with someone um, the leading uh, the prominent political party. Government is not interested. So you can imagine if, if a life of someone like me can be threatened and the police are not doing anything about it. What about an ordinary guy who lives in Guguletu or in Temba Amans Krab? So, you know, that's when people always ask me, says, hey, man, do you really feel safe? He said, tell me, who's safe in this country? <laughs> who's safe? This country murders 70 people every single day. Murder. With a minister of police running around. This, I don't know how much that man is costing us. Uh, must be overspending his budget because just running around in helicopters, um, television, the, the people running around after him. I don't know. Even our media is mad because... Uh, I don't understand why must they run around to, uh, to around uh, with this man from one crisis after the other. Because uh, the Becky Taylor will uh, there'll be a murder or a rape, um, and uh, tell uh, to the group of ladies one of them is lucky raped by one, and then rush to another scene. Nothing happens. So I think uh, I'm in this job because honestly, I'd. <laughs> I would like to one day live in a, in a country where my children uh, can have um, a better life and be live in a country better than, than where in which I was born. Because I lived more than half of my life under apartheid system. When I started building my business, I had to carry a dumb bus. Ducking, I became a master of the ducking and diving from the police. I was a master ducking and diving from the, uh, the police. For just uh, because God created uh, to me in 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 this fashion, and now uh, just look at what uh, twenty uh, twenty nine years of our democracy has done. I can tell you the inequality in this country today. If it doesn't break your heart, me honestly, uh, every time I go into poor communities, when I get home, you know. I need sleeping tablets to be able to sleep. Before, when I was making money in business, uh, when I'm in a hotel, I'll have a glass of wine or a whiskey, I'll sleep. Today, without a sleeping tablet, I won't sleep. Um, because of, um, you see, the level of poverty in this country, I've never seen it during apartheid. Herman Mashaba, thank you.